hello hello you guys i am back with you all for another video if it's your first time seeing my face my name is prophetess regina Pugh. i am a mouthpiece of the lord and i have a ministry kingdom builders connection global it will be linked in the description box or the comment section so you could go over there and check things out if it's your first time coming across this platform you guys I'm going to jump right in. I am talking to uh, the prophetic people on tonight, prophetic seers, as well as Nabi prophets. Um, and I want to talk about something um, that I have worked through. I am working through something that I believe is um, a struggle for most prophetic people. OK, and that is the struggle with time uh, being in the present and versus the promise place. Okay. Does that make sense? Struggling with time. Okay. God has shown you where he is going to take you. God oftentimes tell us uh, where we will end up. He reveals to us the great and mighty, wonderful plans and promises that he has in store for our lives. But we do not get an inside scope of that in-between place, okay? And that's where we struggle. That's where things become very, very difficult for prophetic people, especially, especially my seers and my dreamers, all right? Because what will happen is that even from a child, the Lord begins to give you glimpses into your future. He begins to show you what you're going to do, whether it's like ministry. He begins to show you how he's going to use you mightily in ministry. You may have seen yourself in a dream, you know, like on a platform preaching to hundreds, thousands of people, or, you know, he may have shown you a uh, career wise where you're going to end up showing you that you're going to be very successful, that you're not going to have any needs. You're not going to lack for anything. Okay. God will give us a glimpse into where he's going to take us. But Holy Spirit does not reveal that process place, you guys. And I did a whole teaching about being processed. And I'm going to link that below because child, let me tell you, when the Lord began to process me, it was one of the worst seasons of my life. Okay. I felt like every sting of that process. And I was like, Lord, mm -mm, what's going on? Like this season is different from any other hardship that I have ever faced. The process comes with, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. But I know that by my going through that and what I experience will help somebody else understand and know when God is processing you and when God is trying to work things in you, out of you, and when he's trying to prepare you for your promised place, okay? When he's trying to prepare you for ministry or whatever, he's trying to get your character intact, your integrity, because how I many of you all know as prophetic people, we got to be all the way together, all the way together. You can't have no loose strings. And God is extra hard on his prophets. Why? Because if he's going to trust you to be a mouthpiece for him, to be a representative for him, you're going to, where is that squealing? I'm sorry, you guys. It's my desk shaking or something, but I'm sorry. Uh, I lost my train of thought. If he's going to trust you to be able to deliver what's on his heart and what's on his mind, you just have to be, you have to be a vessel of honor, okay? And I've said that before. You have to be a vessel that he can truly use and truly trust. So the Lord oftentimes deals with his prophetic people with a hard, like a, a iron fist. You know, I don't get away with a lot. Um, you know, if I do something or step out of bounds, I'm going to get corrected. I'm going to let me go to sleep. I'm going to hear their rebuke. I'm going to hear it. He's stern with his prophetic people. You can't get away and float under the radar like most people. OK, but let me get back to what I was discussing to topic the promise place and the time in between that, that ground. The Lord does not reveal to you that you're going to go through all kind of hell 
because he has to make sure that you're prepared and equipped for the promised place. All right. The Lord doesn't let you know that you're going to go through five or 10 years of testing ground. OK, of testing ground to make sure that you are pruned, to make sure that you are refined. OK, so you guys, I come to just encourage you on today to let you know, uh, don't faint. Don't faint in that middle ground, that process place, because God is going to get you to your expected end. If you faint not, Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. I just want to read that. I know y'all have heard that before, but I want to read it. I want your spirit, man, to hear it. Okay, I'm, I'm reading from New, from New King James. And it says, he gives power to the weak. Okay, it gets weary when you are in. In that, that process place, when you're in that season of waiting, you're like, God, you've been showing me forever what you're getting ready to do in my life, where you're going to take it, where you're going to take me. But when your spirit man can grow weary, but the word of God says in Isaiah 40 and 29, he gives power to the weak. Okay. And to those who have no might, he increases your strength. All right. I have been praying that. Like all last week, my prayer has been, God, strengthen me in this place of waiting because it gets weary. It gets weary. God is showing you and telling you. And you're like, God, when? When are you going to bring this stuff to me? When are things going to begin to come together and work out? But the Bible says that he's going to increase you in strength. OK, verse 30 says, even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But what those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. OK, now what you don't want to do, what you don't want to do because you get weary and you're tired of waiting on God is to jump the gun and go ahead of him. All right. Like God has shown you, OK, I'm pushing you into ministry. I, I'm going to use you mightily. But instead of you waiting on that season when he's ready to release you, you jump the gun and then you create catastrophe because you're out of season because God is like, I wasn't ready for you to go yet. I'm still trying to work on your attitude. I'm still trying to work on your temper. What are you doing? You know, so that time, those times when we can get antsy and anxious and we want to go ahead of God. Come on. But you have to wait on the Lord and he will renew your strength. It says they shall mount up with wings like an eagle. Waiting on God will cause you to be able to mount up, will cause you to be able to triumph even in that place of waiting, even in that process place. You will feel the help and the strength of the father with you. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. So as long as you are in the timing of God, as long as you are in the will of God, while you're waiting on that promised place, God is with you. God is with you. You may get a little tired, a little exasperated, like, Lord, I am just I'm trying to trust you. I'm trying to hold on. God will strengthen you. He will strengthen you. Just like my favorite, uh, my favorite encounter in scripture was when Jesus was going, or when Jesus was going to the garden of Gethsemane, he kept disappearing to pray, right? Because the cross was upon him. The time for him to yield up his life was near, right? And he asked God, let this cup pass for me. Like, we don't want to go through that, that place of being processed because it's uncomfortable. It hurts. It hurts bad. I've cried. I cried. Look at here. There were so many nights that I cried, you guys. Everything around me that I thought was certain was being turned upside down and every relationship was being turned inside out. And I was like, God, this is something, this is not normal. And I know you're doing something. I don't quite understand it, but I know that you are behind this, you know? And then there, there was like months down the line. And then I had a supernatural encounter where God was activating me in this encounter. And I heard him tell me, 
I've been processing you. And I was like, wow, I'm telling y'all everything <laughs> that, you know how they say everything that wasn't nailed down, like was getting uprooted. It was crazy. It was crazy. I mean, betrayal, people turning on you, but God has to allow that so that he can work on your integrity, so he can work on your heart, your level of love. Can you still love these people when I, oh, isn't that deep, when I allow them to turn on you? What? When I allow them to turn on you. Because God is ultimately in control. When the Lord can take a person and allow them to flip the script on you because he wants to see what your reaction will be. Can you still pray for them? Father, save them. Father, uh, uh, don't let them go lacking anything. Bless their home. Being processed. That place, that in-between ground is where we struggle. We struggle with God's timing because I know what you're going to do for me. I know who I'm going to be. How many of you all can say that God has revealed your future to you light years ago? God, I've been dreaming about where God is taking me. I dreamed about this place that I'm currently in and I've dreamed about where he's taking me. I'm talking 5, 10, 15 and even further back than that from a little girl. So struggling with God's timing as prophetic people is, is <laughs> hilariously is normal because we see light years ahead of time. Prophetic people are already in the future. We operate in the future. So that's why it, sometimes we can even do things out of season because we're ahead of time. We're ahead of time, our thought process, our creativity, how we move, how we operate. We know what God is going to do. So we are moving different from everybody around us. And they're looking at us crazy. But you're like, I, I dwell in the future. Because I speak the oracles of God, the, the, the plans and the, the promises of God that haven't yet been un, uh, unveiled to the majority of people. You know? So I just want to encourage you guys to wait on the Lord. Don't be weary in well-doing because when that season comes, God is going to blow a wind on your life. When that season comes, nothing or nobody will be able to stop you. Come on. Why? Because God has done what he needed to do on the inside of you. And now you're ready for that promised place. It cannot be sabotaged. The enemy cannot take it away from you. The enemy cannot flip it on you because God ordained that middle ground. And if you go through it the proper way, if you don't forfeit the process, it's going to be worth everything that you've gone through. It's going to be worth every tear that you cry. Some of y'all have been with me for a while. And you remember my testimony from a couple of years back, uh, Growing up in Missouri, uh, growing up in Missouri, born and raised in that area, uh, the Lord relocated me to Dallas, Texas, the DFW area. Uh, the Lord began to reveal to me, "Hey, I'm uprooting you and your family. This is where you're going to be." Right? Was here about a good year. Things are going well, um, and then we experienced job loss. My husband experienced job loss and things just be began to become too much. Uh, and we ended up this place, not homeless, but this place. And so this was during like COVID when, you know, jobs and everything was just kind of, everything was just going crazy. Uh, so we ended up losing our, uh, our apartment and I ended up with my three babies and my husband living in a hotel. And I was like, God, this you ain't show me this part. You didn't show me everything else, but you didn't show me this part. Come on. We talk about the process. Y'all talk about the nights I cry, the nights I set up with God. Come on. And uh, in that place, in that place, though, I, God wouldn't let me faint. 
you will faint not. The Lord was steadily talking to me and ministering to me and telling me I've ordained this place. You have to go through this. This is going to strengthen your faith. This is going to strengthen your walk in me. Yeah, I, I did this. I allowed this. What? Come on. So God will take us through some very uncomfortable seasons, very uncomfortable times before we get to that end goal. But don't be weary, you guys. Don't forfeit. Don't fight it. Because when you don't go through it properly, you got to start back from ground zero. You're going to have to start back over. Oh, God's going to have to set the reset button. And who, who wants to do that? Who wants to do that? I've always maintained the posture. I, I'm like, like, you know what I mean? I don't want to kind of compare myself to that because I don't want no extra trials and fire coming up on me. But like Job, you keep that posture like, God, you're still good. I don't understand what you're doing. I don't understand. I don't understand any of this. But what I won't do is curse you. OK, so keep that posture and know that even in those times when God is silent in that middle ground, before you get to your promised place, the Lord may have promised you a better career. He may have promised you a better job. He may have promised you a spouse. You're waiting to be married. Whatever it is, do not faint because it's working for your good. It really, truly is. It really, truly is. OK, you guys. So I hope that this really blessed you. I wanted to speak to that place that so many of us prophets struggle with. Don't jump the gun. Don't go ahead of God. Just follow him. He's going to lead you. Stay, stay right beside him. Even allow him to carry you through it so that you can be sure that you're on the same page as he is on. Okay. I love you guys so much. God bless you. And I will see you in the next video. Um, you guys, if you are a prophetic seer and you maybe you haven't heard much about this, you may have a inclination. You may, somebody may have told you that, Hey, you, you may be a prophetic seer, or you sound like you have the, the gift of, of, of sight in the spirit realm, uh, or you've heard people say that, Hey, you, you operate in the gift of the prophetic, but you're not really sure. You're not really sure you're trying to learn this language and figure this stuff out. You guys, I also have an ebook, um, that I have written for you guys free download, get it. And it's entitled why seers are vital to the church okay because prophetic seers are the watchmen on the wall the body of christ needs the watchmen okay it, without the sight without the eyes of the body like what are we doing we're feeling around in the dark so this position is vital for the body of christ all right so get that ebook if you want to know more about your gift if you want to uh further figure this thing out i i a lot of people that follow this channel um, have learned by way of my testimony, hey, I think I'm a prophetic seer. I think that God has given me this gift. And I am so grateful to God just to be able to be an example because I had to figure it out on my own. I don't come from a lineage or a line of prophets, uh, you know, so I literally have been walking hand in hand with Holy Spirit and working out this gift and, and figuring this thing out and learning uh, how God used me in my sight. Even when people didn't understand, people thought I was dreaming and making stuff up. And I'm just like, no, no, you know, so be encouraged, be strengthened in your gift. All right. And don't let anybody um, down talk or downplay what it is that God has given you, because the seer's anointing, the prophetic anointing is a very precious gift. James Gall, which penned the uh, book, The Seer which was one of the very first books that I read when I started taking a deep dive into figuring out what I had on the inside of me. Uh, one of the quotes that stood out to me was he said, all seers are prophets, but not all prophets are seers. OK, so you kind of see that advantage. All seers are prophets, but not all prophets are seers. So there's an extra um, level of sensitivity that the prophetic seer operates 
in and under. Okay. That's a special and it's a unique anointing. I remember being about maybe 10 years old and there was a woman that used to go to my, my, my childhood church home. Uh, she transitioned during that time. Like I was still about 10 or 11 years old, but every time she would see me, she would say, you are very peculiar. You are so special. Your anointing is so unique. And I'm young and I'm like, okay. I didn't understand it then, you all. I didn't understand it. But she would pour those words into me almost every time she would see me. And, um, you know, she soon would, would transition, but I never forgot that. And over the years, as I began to come up and as God began to steadily uh, show me things and reveal to me things and everything that that I saw it was taking place in real life. I would have a dream and I would go to my mom. Mom, I saw this. And then it would unroll, unravel exactly how God showed me. Those words never left me. Okay. Prophetic seer is a very unique anointing, very peculiar anointing. All right. Uh, so you guys, I love you so much. Get the ebook and take advantage of that. And I, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.